which exists by itself. <coughs> wow. Go ahead. That which is. Does it admit of this, any that which is that which is? It's. Then he asks, does it admit of any changes whatever? Or is it true that each thing that so exists? Being of one form and itself alone is always in the same state and never admits of any change whatever in any way or at any time or in any place. Therefore, if it is a form or an ados, what should we say about it? That it never admits of any change whatever in That's any right. place, right. any time, or anywhere or in any way. Curious? Okay. I'd like to meet that. Hmm? I'd say I'd like to meet that. No, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. it is okay. No question about that. Um, go to uh, 79D. Sorry. Oh, but with the... She examines by herself. Let us then turn to what we were discussing before. Is he linking it? Come on. Mm -hmm. Right. Let us go back to discussion before. Right. I was going back. Take a look at that paragraph. That's seventy-eight D. Here. Yeah. No. I don't know. Oh, okay. It's the same paragraph. All right. Just check. Did we? Did you? Is it seventy-eight D or seventy-nine D? Seventy-nine. Because it doesn't say. Okay. Yes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. The same 78, 78 at the conclusion of 78, 78 D. Let us then turn to what we were discussing before. Is the essence which we in our dialectical process of question and answer called true being always the same or is it liable to change? Equality, beauty, existence, true being, do they admit, do they ever admit of any change? Or does essence, since it's uniform and exists by itself, remain the same and never in any way admit of any change? What's the what's difference? Here's where he drops the exam there. going back to this paragraph, isn't it? He's going back to this paragraph, and he's playing with it. Mm -hmm. All right? Hitting it again. What do you see is different?
see the term abstract means. Abstract means it has no existence in itself. It's only a name. He's saying, on the contrary, it exists. Right? These things have an existence, and they are the causes of things in the physical world. That's an idea. The idea of abstract challenges all of that. Without an argument, there's no argument in support of this rather strange notion of abstract. Like Flicker, since we have just a moment and have nothing else to do, let me just go back to this beautiful picture. Ah! Ah! The word abstract, does it not mean that you're looking at two things? And the word abstract is the wrong word. What they really mean is... Subtract? Subtraction. <laughs> you're subtracting what? When they say, what do you really have? It's the idea of tree. They don't want to use the word idea, it suggests this positive philosophical sense, so they call it a concept. Right? And therefore, right, a tree has less reality, vivid immediacy than the actual tree. And living things, obviously, see, living things or just things that exist is the highest term, right? Exist. Right? Things, because they can be things that are both living and non-living, right? We call this living things, right? Uh, tree, actual trees are here. The further you go up, the le it subtracts, it subtracts reality. And therefore you're left with the final notion that these are merely names and don't confuse them with something that exists. Plato is exactly the opposite. So ideas have all the reality. These only have a temporary, fluctuating kind of reality, twisting this way and that. Right? So therefore, then what's this then? See? It's, uh, see? it's self. It's self. It's self. That which is, see? And all of that stuff has something that runs through it all. That's the same. Wow. Equal. Beautiful. And in the paragraph we're just in, good. Not that good, but good. Right? There's something that they all share, this word. Which is that really is. That's what it really is. Mm -hmm. And the higher you go, the more you encounter it. It's the other way around, see, the modern world. Oh, no, 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 no. The higher you go, the less it's real. Don't get into abstractions. Better say I got news for you. It's the other way around. So, look, let me go. Uh, here, here's a trip you can make. Uh, Let's go back, let's go back to uh, the first distinction he made, okay? Two lines. They're said to be equal. Are they? No. Right? They are not equal. But they suggest equality, because I'm putting them this way. Not only that, these aren't even lines, are they? No. Because? 
because a lime is breathless length. Why must it be breathless length? Why must it be breathless length? Yeah. <clears throat> because other, well, otherwise you'd have to, it would, it, if it were not breathless, it would have to be calculated in one sense. It's, and now it becomes like a measurable thing, a calculable thing. And it's not meant to be that. It's meant to be like a limit. At least that's my off the top okay. thing. Okay. Bradley has been studying it more recently than I. Uh, let me suggest something, okay? If it has width, like this, these both have widths, uh -huh. let me magnify it. Now make this a point. Would you not agree this could be moved to this position, this position, this position, successively? Right? I could lower it. Right. right? They're different. Yep. Hmm. Therefore, we can never say one line is equal to another if it has width. Because to say it, it's exactly the same means that they're touching their extremities at the same points. But if it has width, What kind of problem does that bring up? Well, all kinds of problems. All kinds of problems. In Therefore, for Plato and Euclid, they say, hey, forget that this, this, this is an artificial problem because a line has no breadth. Nor does a point have any part. parts. Therefore, no parts. Therefore, you can't make these parts. Mm -hmm. Ah. But these lines suggest equality, don't they? Yes. Ah. Well, the lines suggest equality. They want to be equal. They're eager, eager for it. They want it. They want it. Now, like Sorry. neither is equal. Why? Right? You're making a judgment. Are you not when you say equal? They're not equal to each other. But we do get the. But we, in order to say that, you must have the idea of equal. I do. Where did you get that? Did you get that from experience? No. I was born with that. <laughs> I get two more steps now, okay? Two more steps. Um, he's saying there's such a thing as equal itself. But wait a minute. Mustn't that be true in terms of what he's saying on this one level? Is he saying there's something that's the same and beautiful and good? Yes. In the quote that we just read? <laughs> Therefore, if there's something that's the same in both, in respect to that sameness, they are equal. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you have to have the idea of equal if you're going to say same. Oh. If you're going to say like. Yeah, but a like is a way of talking about something that's less than equal. <coughs> right? It approximates it. Yeah. No, no. So yeah. Okay, look here. here. Here's the, here's the <coughs> step. Can we go yeah. to Proclus? to use his idea of the word essence and use that to understand Plato's Phaedo when he's talking about essence. Got it? Now Proclus sees himself and he quotes all the earlier thinkers and he believes he's continuing the tradition. That's the way he writes. He says this, look, um, This is my favorite diagram for a seer. Okay. It turns upon itself, see? And that's the whole idea, by the way, of progression and reversion. Mm -hmm. But uh, what kinds of things can turn upon itself such that 
such that there is no difference between the point they turn upon and any other part of itself. In other words, when it turns upon itself, it simultaneously is, su is superimposition of all of its parts together as a unity and as a whole together as a one. Material. Material, right? This suggests, see, that you can have parts in the process of turning about and therefore presupposes a certain kind of power, presupposes a certain kind of insight, bringing it together, but that's not Lucia. See. Lucia means that there is some kind of reflection we do. Now I had a friend of mine, Harry Jovidovich McGee, who had a problem. And he said that every time he reflects upon himself, he doesn't do very well because he can only reflect on a part of himself. Isn't that true? Have you ever met people like that? <laughs> no? I know. Thank you. There's the proof. There's the proof. <laughs> the people at UCI, that's, that's, but that's their problem. They only have a part of themselves when they reflect. Yeah. That's why they get their name, you know, UCI. Yeah, I don't see <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's their... They misspell it, but the, the right, the, you know, it should be, yeah, right? Right? You see, I. Right? Hey, wait a minute. When you reflect upon yourself, what are you doing? Must it be, see, can you use the word total? Or to take the word part? How would you talk, how would you describe it? Well, I was trying to remember. What in those section, those um, the elements that talk about self reversion, reversion upon the self, such that yes. every part reverts, it reverts every part upon every part. Every part on every part on every part. And I was trying to recall the name for that. No. Okay, every part upon. Therefore, it cannot be physical. Right. That's right. It's incorporeal. That's that in, it's therefore, it's incorporeal. Yeah. Right. Now you know what he's saying then. This kind of process, totally upon itself, all parts of itself simultaneously, the whole in, in terms of a total unity, where all of the parts are seeing all of the parts in a uni unified way, and that's a claim he's making. Would you put some words on that? No, I, no, I, no I, I don't have to because when I do that, I know that Brad will always come and help. Wait, are you saying the beautiful itself can do that? It can what, wait a minute. Yeah. Cool. What you agree? <laughs> good. Hey, good? Beautiful. Yeah. And, but what about this? Equally. Equally. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? <laughs> okay, what kind of a claim is he making then? That this is a very interesting claim, isn't it? And it runs counter to all modern thought and the language we're taught in the schools. Because once you use the word and accept the notion of abstract, you can't do this doesn't make any sense. Now therefore, the only question here is, can this be verified in one's own experience? That's the issue. That's what it finally comes down to. Is it possible for someone to experience these kinds of things and say, yes, this language and the way in which this is described fits uniquely the very thing. That's what it comes down to. Mm. Don't we always give questions like this to... The question is, can it be verified? Don't we have people that we usually give questions like this to? Yeah, yeah. 
Remember uh, Harry Dravidovich? <laughs> and he Was had that, that great he had that great mystical experience and he came down from the mountains and he said, I saw beauty itself because I just saw a part of it. <laughs> 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 that was the problem. Yeah, remember him? Yeah. Yeah. And we and you asked him what part and he was embarrassed to say what part? <laughs> <laughs> he was. Yeah, well, I didn't know anything about it, but that's what he said. <laughs> yeah, you see, the question is whether or not this kind of experience, right? Is it possible that a person can have that kind of an experience, of beauty itself? and say, yep, it fits. That kind of language, that kind of exploring the, the experience in terms of this language and these philosophical notions, if it can ideally be suited to describe this kind of experience of beauty itself, then it's not arbitrary. It fits the range of experience of the two people. And remember, this was, uh, uh, BLSD. <laughs> What's that? Be before also A -L 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 Yeah, that's before a technical language. W L S D. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> well, before, after, and during. After. <laughs> right? Okay, try it. One more step. Could we ask the same thing for the people who use the word abstract? I don't think so. Could you, we would say, can you explain what you mean in terms of experience? Can you do that? Do what? Can you look at two things and show us how you are subtracting all material, all sense data away from it, so that all you have is something lifeless and merely a name? It's merely a name. They would have to explain that, wouldn't they? in their own experience. Otherwise, they're making claims for something that's pretty absurd. If the statement we made before, if it's just something we know to be able to make an account of it. Well, this is kind of interesting. It's like they, they, the, the, the criticism they make of metaphysicians that they're talking about things that have no real being would actually be it, you'd be able to make that same art criticism against them because the very they wouldn't be able to give it a description of it in their own experience because it has no experiential content. And they, but they think that's all there is. Okay, let me try something now. Go back to the big problem. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just seeing something. I mean, you no. say merely a name, but it's a concept. I don't know what that uh, is. What is that? <laughs> Yes, I mean, when somebody looked it up on Wikipedia, they said a basic unit of meaning. So you're, we're talking here about concepts or no, meaning no, 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 no. being empty. No, no, no. If it's a basic unit of meaning, I guess there's more uh, and additional things that make meaning apart from that. I wonder what those things are. Well, yeah, you need some more yeah. glue and stuff like yeah. that. But, um, but in any case, it's empty. So meaning That's right. is vacuous. That's right. Meaning is meaningless. That's right. That's called, <laughs> That's nom horrible. That's called nominalism. Yeah, merely right. a name. Right, it's just a name. Yeah. I gotcha. I Come. see. Merely a name. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Nominalism. Empty of all content. Right, right. Oh. Now I've got something worse, all right? Now, would you agree, I've worked too much tonight. I asked the man I've worked too much tonight, see? Look here. He, he's going to make a claim, and we want to keep the claim together. If, if you grasp this, then you have a kind of knowledge. If you grasp this, you now have a kind of knowledge. A special kind of knowledge. What word do they use for that? In, no. in the Greek? Pardon? Do you know what word they use in yeah. the Greek for that? No. What, what is it? I thought you just wanted to know whether I knew the word. <laughs> that was a sad question. I'll give you a quote. Okay, let's get there. 
I'm at uh, 76D. Now this is going through the 14 or so steps in the argument that we went through last week. And in my low below, then Simeus, the souls existed previously before there were in human form, apart from bodies, and they had intelligence, phrenesis. And we have been playing with that word for many, many years. And this is his conclusion, you see, by going through all of this, it has several goals. And one goal, of course, he's exploring the notion of recollection. The other is to describe this kind of knowledge takes on a special term, phronesis. And I assure you, Barbara can testify to the fact that she's been in that word for a while. Right? Yep. Could you say any? No. <laughs> no, just so. Really? No? Please not. But it is a puzzling <laughs> word. It is a very puzzling word, yeah. No. But here, this whole argument says, you get it, then you got that, that's phrenesis. Okay. Now, the Loeb calls it intelligence. What is Rouse? Well, he calls wisdom. it wisdom. wisdom. But then he right. says, unless, indeed, we get all these, well, this is Simeon's, unless we get all these knowledges at birth, Keep going. Uh, Socrates, for the time is still left, for this time. That's it. Still it's not left. the same quote, is it? I don't know. Yeah. Don't have the same no. quote? He calls, he, calls it wisdom. Wisdom. he calls it wisdom. 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 Look, in Rouse, he calls it wisdom. Look here, what's interesting about this is that this is discoverable by understanding. Wisdom is not discoverable. <laughs> Therefore, this is DNOI. This is understanding. This kind of understanding leads to a kind of knowledge called phrenesis. And therefore, the lobe uses the word wisdom because of this confusion about how do you translate that one Greek word. Right? The lobe calls it intelligence, which is better than wisdom. But, but what does it mean? It means you can follow the argument, and if you under hey. It's, and it's all hypothetical. If, 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 if. The whole thing is if, 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 if. The whole thing is hypothetical. All, under, all arguments that do annoy and understand are hypothetical. This is hypothetical. Taylor calls it intellectual prudence. Pardon? <laughs> yeah, intellectual prudence. That's what Tom says. That's right. So if you're able to do that, Pardon? So if you're able to follow the art, these hypothetical arguments, and you're following the arguments, then that's for nations? I, I'm missing something. Okay, what are you missing? Well, I thought... <laughs> that's a joke, didn't you? That? Okay. That's a good one. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I thought you connected for nations to something Pardon else. Pardon me, you stated it very well. I was going to congratulate you on your restatement. I thought you connected it to something else, I, and that was. If great. I did, kick me. I'm not. I mean, it, well, I, that, that's why I was asking. <laughs> I thought you. I thought I heard you connected to something else that I missed. Well, I but rather. Well, if that's what it is, then okay. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. All right. I connected with Dianoia. to understand it. Okay, that's what I didn't see. Well, no, 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 no. Yes, you do. No. What? No. Yes, you do. What does he call the the whole argument? A knowledge, right? A knowledge. And a knowledge. it gives a name to that kind of knowledge. What does he call it? Phronesis. Thank you. So how's Dianoic? Come in. That's the word he uses several times to describe the kind of reasoning that he takes the text. Uh, oh, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
shaving his throat. To get to that from me. Like no, no, you just want reassurance. That's fine. I don't know. No, 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 that costs you. That costs you. No, come on. To you. Hey, make my joy for nothing. Well, then I like that advice. <laughs> no, right, but you do see it. Okay, got it. All right. No, 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 no. Right? Okay. All right. So this is a kind of, this, this argument shows the game a philosophy in terms of understanding. Right? And it's hypothetical. Right? That is to say, it starts with an if. This is only true if, and if not, not. It's hypothetical. Mm. What do you get? Like you get a certain story? class of knowledge. Okay, why is that important? In the divided line, this is what he calls understanding. Right, divided line. Images, belief, understanding, knowing. So this is the kind of stuff he's saying to exercise. What's, it goes if, 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 is there a, um, he called an experience in consciousness, <coughs> that validates the hypothesis? Is there a way to validate the if that you started with? That's a very important question. He has to show now that this kind of reflection right, prepares the mind for a noose, for saying. Mm. That's the bridge. This is kind of an intellectual yoga, you see. Uh, so this is preparation. This is the preparation. This is preparing the mind. Like, by the way, notice you don't have to believe it. It's all if, if, if. Yeah. What does it do to follow this reasoning we're doing? Do you find it interesting or not? I'm interested in knowing. Yeah. What? What do you find interesting? Um. Well, it seems to tie a lot of things together for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in my studies. And like you said, it's a yoga, so you can see that if you use that understanding to revert upon yourself and your own what's come before, you, you can, it's like a yoga. Like, okay. Um, um, would you not agree? <clears throat> He's now going to describe this stuff. What stuff? What is? Right? Beauty itself, good itself. Right? No change. He's going to now talk about this. And he's going to link it to, since these, these qualities are the same qualities of the soul, then he's going to say, therefore, soul exists. And it doesn't make any sense at all because it doesn't follow. Unless you grab the notion that the idea of soul must have the idea of intellect and dianoia or understanding. See, so he's saying this you didn't learn in this world, these ideas you must already have had before you were born. And by the way, each of these ideas has the absolutely the same qualities as the soul. And when you experience it, you experience the nature of beauty itself, why equal? Why equal? Come on. This is very important. It doesn't fit, therefore take it out. My copy doesn't have it. Because without equal itself, you'd still be left with similarities and still just like contact with the appearances of the realities, and not them themselves. You could still be like a disconnect. Whereas when you finally have equal, you have sameness. 
and the same experience as those ideas themselves? Yes, but I didn't, I didn't hear you use the word equal. Well, equality brings about sameness. That's true. And so, therefore, you'd be experiencing the same as the thing itself, no longer just the likeness of it. No, that's true. You would become the same as the thing itself. Ooh, that's different. Therefore, the difference. you would be equal. Right. You become the same. See, all kinds of empirical evidence, you always know there's a difference between you, the seer, the object seen, right? There's always a difference, a fundamental difference between you and anything you experience. Mm -hmm. In this experience, <coughs> you're it. You're Equal. Pure equality. No difference. There's a beautiful quote. Yeah, but no difference is equality. Therefore, that idea is very important. Boy, the guy knew how to write. <laughs> okay, now I thought it was a little, little works now that we had the introduction. Um, terms, he's going to pull them together, and that's where he goes from 70, around 78 D on. And uh, 78 D, let us then turn to what we were discussing before, third time, right? Third time he's getting you to go back. Right? Let us then turn to what we were discussing before. Is the essence which we and our dialectical process of question and answer call true being always the same? Or is it liable to change? Equality, beauty, existence, true being, right? The admit of any change, right? Keep that term going, right? And now I want to move to putting that together at 79D. Now we're going to pull in the soul with all of these notions. But when the soul inquires alone by itself, departs into the realm of the pure, the everlasting, the immortal, and the changeless. What's it doing? When the soul is separated from the body, it ex see the same language, we're using the same language, now it experiences. Therefore, it's no longer in Dianoia. It's not experiencing. What's the name for that? Sir? What's the name for that? This, this uh, what's the name for what? Here it's called wisdom, but what's, what, what's, uh, well, what's the, well, see, the state of the soul, the state of the soul for this is phrenesis. Phrenesis. Okay. When it's, that's the state, but now it, from that state it can experience. Right. Once it's here, once this is considered legitimate to the soul, or to you, or anybody, right? From that basis, the next experience is possible. Let's see how he pulls it off. See, watch the word when, okay? But when the soul inquires alone by itself, 
It departs into the realm of the pure, the everlasting, the immortal, and the changeless. And being akin to these, it dwells always with them, whenever it is by itself, and is not hindered, and it has rest from its wanderings and remains always the same, unchanging with the changeless, since it is in communion therewith. And this state of the soul, pronounces. Right? Now what do you get from it? Right? Consider then the matter in another way. When the soul and the body are joined together, nature directs the one to serve and to be ruled and the other to rule and be must. Now this being the case, which seems to you like the divine, and uh, which we like, and, and which like the mortal. Uh, that's a poor reading, okay, let me do you. Now this being the case, which seems to you like the divine and which like the mortal? Or do you think that the divine is by nature fitted to rule and lead, and the mortal to obey and serve? Then, then this series, is this not the conclusion from all that we have said? She's probably now three recollections pulling together in the conclusion. Then C, CBs. If this is not the conclusion from all that we have said, that the soul is most like the divine and the immortal and intellectual and uniform and indissoluble and ever unchanging, and the body, of course, the opposites. Then it's natural for the body to need speedy dissolution and for the soul, the indissoluble. So what is, see if they're all, watch them, if they're all equal, if the idea of equal, then we have separated, that's the realm you enter. So you can say, hey, when the soul separates from the body, you know what you experience? That pure equality between yourself and the object, yourself, or beauty, or you perceive the nature of the goodness of reality, interchangeable terms, interchangeable terms. Clever? So you'll be mingling among equals. Yes, oh good, mingling <laughs> among equals. Yeah. Clever. Okay. Uh, then you can't put yourself down. <laughs> and he calls this, on 81, this is the practice. This practice being nothing other than the state of, the practice of death, or the practice of philosophy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought we'd just go over that because we had so many criticisms from last week. Yeah. And I need a cup of coffee or something. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.